an aneurysm is a silent threat to your health. If an aneurysm in a blood vessel in the brain gets too large, it can rupture, causing a stroke. However, because most aneurysms have no symptoms, they're usually found by chance during a doctor visit. Dr. Vladimir Cortez, a neurosurgeon at Desert Regional Medical Center, examines the range of ruptures that could occur with an aneurysm. An aneurysm is a uh, defect in the vessel wall in our brain that causes an outpouching, almost like a blister. When an aneurysm ruptures, it depends on the amount of rupture there is. You can have a little bit of blood come out, kind of like a leaky faucet, meaning that it just leaks out a little bit of blood, and the patient may notice symptoms like headaches, maybe even uh, stroke-like symptoms like uh, seizures where they, you can get numbness of the hands, feet perhaps, numbness of the face, or it can be a frank rupture where the, there's a, certainly just an opening of, the, of that blister and also an, a, a, a lot of blood is released and that causes a lot of problems to the brain itself. The rupture is known as an aneurysmal rupture which causes a hemorrhagic stroke. Dr. Cortez discusses who's more at risk for an aneurysm. Aneurysms can grow in, uh, in all sorts of patients, all sorts of ages, um, and gender and race. But the most common is going to be in the above 40, 50 to 60 years of age, um, a little more predilection toward females, 2 to 1, and minorities about 2 to 1. Family history is among the risk factors for an aneurysm. There's high blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, alternate lifestyles that can potentially cause aneurysms to grow. There are a range of treatment options for aneurysms. The treatments can include three. They are conservative management for aneurysms. Not all aneurysms need to be treated. Some of them can be small and they can be followed very closely. So you have conservative management, clipping, which is the standard way that has been around for over a hundred years and then you have endovascular which is is a relatively new meaning that uh, the technology and the and the technique for treating aneurysms endovascular starting around in the 80s 90s and then since then has continued to develop what we do is uh, we access the artery um, you can access the artery in the arm most commonly the artery in the leg and then uh, with a network of catheters that look like IV tubing we access the aneurysm from the inside through various techniques that can be embolized using uh, material that what will, will, will it will do, it will occlude the aneurysm, the flow into the aneurysm, and at times, if needed, you can put a stent to be able to bypass the flow or further adjunct the treatment of the aneurysm. Dr. Cortez gives us a patient's story. I had a patient, 72-year-old male, uh, with a, a significant heart condition that develops, was developed in seizures for over a period of a year. Non-invasive imaging showed that he had a large, relatively large aneurysm in the center of the core of his brain. He was not a candidate for open surgery because of his heart condition. I was given the case and I decided that he would, be, he would benefit from an endovascular approach. The aneurysm was treated with a combination of coiling and stenting. He did very well. Uh, post he was able to be discharged at day three. Um, and has been seizure-free for over a year. Dr. Cortez outlines the tests done to determine if an aneurysm is suspected. If you're concerned about having an aneurysm or if there's a strong family history of having one, uh, my suggestion or my re personal recommendation would be to visit your doctor. And uh, the first things to start out with is getting a plain CAT scan. Um, the reason for it is uh, the CAT scan won't show that you have an aneurysm per se, but it may show that you may have had previous strokes, and that could lead to further workup. Uh, one of the best studies to do for aneurysms is to do a CT angiogram, a non-invasive study. If there's a particular reason why the patient can't get a CT angiogram, say if they have uh, kidney issues, they can't handle the contrast, then they may be best getting an MRI with an um, angiogram sequence of that. Um, otherwise, the absolute best study to look for aneurysms would be for, to do an angiogram, an invasive angiogram.